Hey, it's Professor S here, and for the next five minutes or less, I want to discuss with you the concept of cell membrane permeability. More than likely, if you've had any kind of biology courses before, you've probably heard the membrane referred to as being selectively permeable. And I'm also willing to bet you've never got a completely good handle on it precisely what that means. And to really understand the idea of selective permeability, you have to first more broadly understand what membrane permeability is in general the ease with which a substance passes through the membrane, but then get into the extremes of being fully impermeable, being fully permeable, and then getting to the idea of how you could then control that to be selectively permeable. So with all that said, I don't see any reason to sit here in my office and discuss it. Let's head into the animator. The only smart place to have our conversation about membrane permeability is right here with the cell membrane. Now remember, cell membranes are predominantly phospholipid bilayers, like what I'm standing on. What's important about them being composed mostly of phospholipids is the fact that they effectively have two components. On the outer portions of the membrane, we have two very thin hydrophilic layers formed by the hydrophilic heads of the phospholipids. One layer on the outside of the cell where I'm standing, and then one layer on the interior of the cell touching the cytoplasm. Hydrogen bonding between water and the cytoplasm and the extracellular fluid uh, and interacting with the hydrophilic heads, that stabilizes the membrane's basic structure. But the bulk of the membrane's thickness is the hydrophobic interior where we find the phospholipid tails. If a substance is going to pass through this boundary to get into or out of the cell, it's got to go through that hydrophobic interior. The simplest way to do it would be just to go through this lipid bilayer. And substances that are hydrophobic can do that. But the majority of substances that interact uh, with cells or that cells produce or, or that cells need, are, are the majority of them are ionic or hydrophilic in nature. Those kinds of substances can't pass through the membrane. So while substances that can pass directly through the lipid bilayer, we can describe the membrane as fully permeable to those substances because they can freely enter or leave the cell, the majority of substances, the membrane's effectively impermeable unless those substances get some help. What those substances effectively need are holes. A hole to pass through. Now, I'll talk in another video about what that actual hole is, but if there was a hole that allowed a substance to go through the membrane without going through that hydrophobic interior, it could freely enter or leave the cell. And in fact, if we had multiple holes for a particular substance, we could make it even easier for that substance to enter or leave the cell. So while the cell is functionally impermeable in its membrane to hydrophilic and ionic substances, by creating and changing the holes available in the membrane, the cell can change permeability for particular substances. That's the reason we describe cell membranes as being selectively permeable, because the cell, by determining what kinds of holes are available for substances to enter and leave, it determines how permeable the membrane is to those various substances. So listen, I want to try something different because I really think when I put the hat on backwards like this, that it makes me look young and hip. You're not young and no one says hip anymore. Fine, but don't look young. Um, rad? No, you're not rad either. Um, fly? No. Uh, fresh? No. I'm slaying. No, just stop. Bad? No. Groovy? Yes, all the kids these days say groovy all the time. Just do yeah. the take. Okay. Hey man, this is Professor S. You enjoyed that video. There's a couple others that you may find interesting as well. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the new groovy videos that we're doing.